In 2017, James Foreman, Jr., a prominent figure in criminal justice and cultural issues, published Locking Up Our Own, Crime and Punishment in Black America, a significant political nonfiction work. Through an examination of pivotal moments in recent American history, Foreman delves into the perplexing support of African American leaders in positions of power for the escalating rates of incarceration and harsher sentencing of black individuals. Drawing upon his expertise and experience as a public defender and a professor at Yale Law School, Foreman offers valuable insights and analysis in his inaugural book, which has garnered recognition as a best-selling title by The Washington Post. The narrative unfolds in the 1990s, as Foreman finds himself in a Washington, D.C. courtroom representing African-American clients accused of various crimes. On this particular day, he advocates for a disadvantaged young man facing charges related to gun possession and a small quantity of marijuana. Despite Foreman's earnest efforts to argue for leniency, he recognizes the predictable sequence of events that often follows in such cases. The presiding judge delivers a sermon, invoking the ideals of Martin Luther King, Jr., and Foreman knows all too well that this lecture typically precedes a prison sentence. Sadly, his intuition proves accurate once again, as the defendant receives a punishment in an institution notorious for its adverse conditions. It becomes evident that the young man will receive limited educational opportunities during his confinement and face significant barriers to employment upon release. Foreman realizes that, under these circumstances, the likelihood of him returning to the criminal justice system within a few years is alarmingly high. Moreover, witnessing King's words being co-opted by a black judge to endorse systemic injustice proves deeply disheartening for Foreman. It becomes apparent to him that this isolated incident is merely a fragment of a larger narrative that demands to be shared and understood. In part one of his book, Foreman delves into three significant periods in America's recent history, tracing the roots of its tough-on-crime mentality. He begins with the aftermath of Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination, followed by the drug culture of the 1960s and the high crime rates of the 1970s. As America grapples with the challenges of post-Jim Crow integration, authorities target drugs and violence by imposing restrictions on access to firearms and marijuana, often viewed as a gateway drug. Unfortunately, these substances are prevalent in impoverished, predominantly black neighborhoods. Foreman elucidates how individual police officers, many of whom are African American, achieve success by making arrests in black communities. As they ascend the ranks, their promotions come with increased power and influence, enabling them to shape laws and policies that further target African Americans. Foreman argues that this pattern of legislation is not unique to recent times, citing examples of racially biased laws dating back to the 19th century. However, Foreman emphasizes that just as black firefighters are not expected to overhaul firefighting protocols in America, black police officers should not be burdened with the sole responsibility of transforming the entire policing system. African Americans, like their Caucasian counterparts, pursue careers in law enforcement to secure stable employment with desirable benefits, and this pursuit represents a form of equality. In Part 2, Foreman explores the repercussions of punitive laws resulting from the events described in Part 1. Aggressive policing in black communities continues under the guise of protecting residents from drugs and violence, but in reality, it primarily shields middle- and upper-class households from the influence of economically disadvantaged neighborhoods. These policies have had detrimental effects, leading to strained relationships between residents of lower-class communities and law enforcement. Moreover, they fail to address the underlying social and cultural factors that contribute to the involvement of individuals in these communities with drugs and firearms. However, amidst these challenges, there is a glimmer of hope, albeit faint. Events like the Obama presidency and high-profile cases of police violence against African Americans have shifted public opinion regarding racially targeted policing practices. People are increasingly recognizing the importance of peace and equality over excessively harsh methods and punitive prison sentences that only perpetuate the cycle of reoffending. While acknowledging that racism persists in America and that change will take time, these developments represent promising steps in the right direction. Years later, Foreman finds himself once again in the same Washington, D.C. courtroom. 
The circumstances are eerily similar as he awaits the judge's decision after advocating for a young African-American man, however, this time there is no self-righteous speech. Instead, the judge offers the defendant a choice, a chance to rebuild his life rather than strictly adhering to a punitive interpretation of the law. It is an illustration of justice tempered with compassion, rather than being fueled by tyranny. While more progress is needed, this moment serves as a welcome sign of a changing paradigm. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.